It's I'm ready to just jump right in if you are. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's, let's do this. The last time I came over to visit Austin with Liv because like, he, you know, he's recovering from a broken leg or whatever. You were here as kind of like this like slum landlord person that's like, <laughs> like, like regulating things. <laughs> and then, like, I've been called a lot of shit, but that <laughs> slum landlord is the first. I know why am I so excited about the landlord part? <laughs> I'm a lord. Like you, like you, your energy was just unmatched, and I, I was like, "What if Matt? Like, I need to get Matt on the podcast." So, like, yeah, yeah. tell us your life story, who you are, what you're doing, what's going on. Um, oh. and yeah, we'll go from there. Cause you're funny. You are genuinely funny. And you're like quick with like jokes too. Yeah, you know? well, that's what happens when you're raised by a drug addict. You got to get funny. You either get funny or really good at the point scale. And yeah, math wasn't my best thing, so I decided to go with funny. So I was, uh, I grew up splitting my time between Tucson and Monterey. And uh, in Tucson, I would live with my mom who uh, married a Coke dealer. And uh, she was, um, she was crazy. I used to call her Frank. She hated it. And then, um, so I lived in Tucson, uh, and then I would come out to see my dad during the winters, and I'd be like a different person. Like, me and my dad would surf and work on the house. And then they'd send me back to, to hell, I mean, Tucson, and then I would have to, like, live with my mom. So, uh, it was like, uh, it, like, wasn't the best upbringing. You know, I, um, I don't know, I don't talk about it very much because it's like, it's kind of personal. Yeah. But, um, but I lived with my mom till I was about 15 and then I guess I got too tall to live in the house and, uh, and then she kicked me out, which was probably like the nicest thing she ever did for me. And then, uh, uh, my mom was crazy. She used to do crazy shit. So they'd be playing Yahtzee. All night long, and I don't know if you've ever been around a bunch of cokeheads that play Yahtzee, but it's fucking loud. And I'd be like in my room screaming, like, shut up, you fucking cokeheads. And then my mom would come in here, and, and like they would be like, we're not doing coke, I swear. And then uh, I'd wake up in the morning, and they'd be all sweaty. The same, I remember one time they were like, my mom got them all the, like, because it would be a bunch of drag queens, and they were all in a circle sewing this fucking some sequins onto a dress and by the time I came woke up in the morning the whole dress was all sequins like nobody stopped and that was like that was like run of the mill shit for me and then uh was that hard to do like what is sewing a dress like and turning it into one sequence I don't know but they were focused okay yeah (laughs) (laughs) like they were like on it so uh what happened after I was 15? Oh, I, um, I decided that I was a gangster, which was a horrible mistake, because I'm not a gangster, and my only fighting move is block- blocking punches with my face, so, like, so I could, uh, I continued to get, am I, like, I've been in a bunch of fights, right, and my record is, like, I think I've won, like, four. Like and those guys were sucked at fighting. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you gotten your butt beaten? Oh, easily twenty times. Are you serious? Yeah. Why do you keep fighting then? Uh, because they don't find me funny. Like, okay. <laughs> like it's not like I go find somebody to fight. What happens is I see something about somebody that's funny and I tease them, and then they punch me in the face. Really? Yeah. Or when I was younger in Tucson, it was like, you had to fight. Like, So, I got a little brother who's uh, got a lot of physical disabilities. And so, if somebody teased him, then I would go fight them. Like, every time. Like, I love my little brother, and I was not going to let anybody tease him. Was this happening, like, at, like, school? or like? Yeah, it happened at school okay. a lot. Of, and a lot of times, we'd meet up after school. In fact, in fourth grade, I got jumped and thrown down a flight of cement stairs. How, how many stairs? There was like, I don't know, like, like eight or twelve of them. Damn. I fucking cracked my head on the bottom one, and then a bunch of blood came out, which I've, which caused everybody to run away mm-hmm. when I had to go home with my face all bloody, and my mom, she, she can't, like, she, like, turned, like, she doesn't do well with blood, mm-hmm. 
So I had to like sit on the table and wait for her fucking wife to come home to stitch me up. Your mom had a wife? Yeah. Yeah. My mom's had two wives. Dang. Okay. Yeah. Because she apparently she can't keep one. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, last time we were here, you were saying that you were around, uh, like you've, you've been hanging out with, uh, like drag queens your whole life. Is that? Yeah. Like, yeah. That's um, my mom's friends. Okay. Yeah. Were they like nice that. to you? Treated you well? Yeah, you know, like just like everybody else. Some were nice, some were dicks. I mean, they all had dicks, but. <laughs> and then how did you end up on the Central Coast? Because right now we're in Los Osos. Like, how did you end so, up there? So, I was living in Tucson, um, just being a fucking tweaker, doing tweaky things. And, um,. And my mom and brother moved out here, and I've always been, like, staying close to my brother. So, well, I was in, no, then I'd been up in Reading, yeah, no, they moved out here and I was in Tucson. I was a tweaker run wild. I may or may not have shot somebody in their foot and decided it was time to leave Tucson. <laughs> and I, I went to my dad's, and I was like, dude, I need help. And he misunderstood what I meant by help. What I meant was I needed a new car, some money and then like a meth lab. And what he thought is I needed rehab. And uh, so I argued with him for a while and then I went to sleep and I woke up in a rehab. And, uh, and in rehab I met this guy who, uh, his dad lived in Reading. So I was like, let's go ruin his life. So we went up there and then I was, when I was in Reading, I kept going to the hospital cause I'm diabetic. And I don't know if you know this, but diabetics and a full diet of methamphetamines create issues. And uh, and they called my mom, and I told her that it was just the diabetes, and I was going to come back down. So then she bought me a bus ticket, and I almost made it all the way here. I got to Sacramento, and um, I had tried heroin for the first time before I got on the bus, which sucked. Because so, at first I was like, oh yeah, this is great. I feel like I'm sitting in God's lap. Like, I see why people do this. And then I sat down, I see this guy who was sleeping, and then my stomach flipped, and I yacked all over his shoes oh. while he was asleep, and I just slowly got up and moved to the back. <laughs> it's like Slumlord Matt starting. <laughs> what does heroin feel like? It feels like you're sitting in God's lap. It's just the best it's feeling just, ever. No it's pain. Super warm. You, your whole body warms up. And you're happy. I was like, oh yeah, I'm not thinking about any of the shitty shit I do. And then you throw up, and that part I wasn't all right with. Yeah. And then so I got to Sacramento, and I was like sick, and I told them that I needed ice chips, but I had like two cents to my name, and they wouldn't give me ice chips. Mm-hmm. So I threw a fit and laid down on the floor and I was like, call an ambulance then. And then uh, and then I made it back here and then that's how I got to the Central Coast. Have you been here ever since? Yeah, yeah, I'm like a cockroach. I don't leave unless you make me. <laughs> <laughs> what have you, have you just like been like in this house? Have you uh, like lived in other cities besides Los Osos? Yeah, so I live, I've lived in Morro Bay, AG, I lived in Atascadero. Escadero was a nightmare because it was like, so I was living with my, that's where my mom and brother lived with my aunt, and then uh, my uncle was a crime scene detective over there, and I was like, let me live here, and they were like, you're a dirty tweaker, you can live in the garage, but you're not allowed in the house unless the cop's here. <laughs> <laughs> so the chihuahuas, there's two chihuahuas that had more house privileges than I did. You have like a like a fridge and like a cook stove out in the garage so you can like make food and stuff? No, I had to wait for my uncle to come home and come upstairs. Oh, okay. All that was there was I could walk outside and drink out of the hose. Nice. Yeah. I'm telling you, the dogs had cold water and bowls <laughs> and food and the little tweaker in the garage got access to the hose and a cot. <laughs> rent free? Rent, uh, yeah, rent free. Okay, that's good. Yeah. I don't think, I mean, I'm a slumlord, but that would have been really slum. 700 bucks a month for a yeah. hose and a cot. <laughs> That's where it's at now. Yeah, seriously. You're kind of like in charge of this household, it feels like. 
Like, you'll yeah, pull up on is... here, come kick it with Austin, like, you'll throw on, like, some UFC fights, like, 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 uh, last time we were here, you guys were talking about, uh, like, the maids you have coming over and, like, cleaning shit, and you're, like, giving people money and saying, like, give the maids tips and stuff, like. Oh, yeah, so, so I have the lease to this place, and I rent out the rooms, like, before, um, they lived here, I lived this, uh, I lived here with, um, this other girl, and then her kid. And I was helping her raise her kid. And then, apparently, I'm intolerable, so they had to leave. And then, um, so, yeah, like, the maids are, so I like to have the house clean, right? Yeah, it, it looks pretty clean. Yeah, but I don't have the energy to do it anymore because I've got chronic kidney disease and I'm on dialysis. Shit. So, like, I just don't have the energy to scrub the whole the whole house the way it needs to. So, instead of being, like psycho and be like you guys need to do all this stuff because I want it done which doesn't seem fair at all I just hire some mates and then I like I mean they're expensive but they do I mean they, I don't want to clean and piss off the toilet yeah I mean I got this guy's got one leg there's no way he's aiming correctly <laughs> <laughs> Do they, uh, like, vacuum the floors, mop and stuff, or are they just doing a few specific things? I tasks? just have them do the kitchen, the bat, and the bathrooms. Okay. And they scrub, all, they do all the scrubbing and all the vacuuming, I mean, they clean all the, the little gross bits. Twice a month or once a month? Once a month. Once a month. I wish, if I could afford twice a month, I might do it. You'd be stoked. Yeah. How did you, so, it seems like you've came a long way from living... With the Chihuahuas <laughs> up until now. Yeah. You know, well, like I got, how, what changed? How I, did you get here? I got sober. Really? Yeah. And then I was started commercial fishing. And I commercial fished for like eight years. I did a lot of uh, long lining. And then I fished for slime eels a lot. Slime eels are actually a little grosser than they sound. Slime eels? What's a slime eel? It's like those purple snake that eats... I mean, they, they eat dead whale carcasses really? and dead things on the bottom, yeah. Why were you fishing for those? Because people would buy them. Eat them? Yeah. Do they yeah. taste good? You seem to, I don't... I don't know. I wouldn't stick one of those things in my mouth if you paid me. It's supposed to taste like shrimp, but I'm like, if you wanted to eat something that tastes like shrimp, why don't you eat shrimp? Yeah. That's this gross little snake thing. Yeah. It just doesn't seem like it would even taste good to begin with. Yeah, and then once you see him crawling out of an eyeball, it's like, you're, uh, you're done. It's like, then I'm like scared of snakes, right? So I see a snake and I like, I like want to run. I like have an instinctual thing, like, they're snakes bad. Yeah. And I open up the first bucket and it's all, blah, 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 all these snakes crawling out. And I was like, well, I guess it's time to stick your hand in there. <laughs> What, uh, so you made money doing, like, commercial fishermen stuff? Yeah. Is it good money? What, did it's, you have fun doing it? So I really love the ocean, so I liked being out on the ocean, and I liked that no matter what my problems were, all I had to do was untie the lines, and they could not get me until I came back. And then, The uh, fishing lines, or? Yeah, once the boat leaves the harbor, I mean, like, I, like you could be running from the police, and they can't get you till you come back. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, so I liked I liked the freedom of it. But then I ended up going blind. So I had to stop doing it. Like blind blind? Yeah, I have a thirty degree field of vision. What's that mean? It means that if you stuck a red solo cup over your right eye, that's everything I see at the right at the same time. A red solo cup over yeah, your eye. Of your right eye. Of your right eye. So I don't have any peripheral vision. It's advanced tunnel vision. Okay. And so, well, if you stick a solar cup over your eye, you can't see anything. Oh, you mean if you cut out the bottom? Yeah. Oh, okay. The bottom, yeah. It, is your vision, like, progressively getting worse? Uh, no, it's pretty stable right now. Okay. That's good. Yeah, That's yeah. Good. I mean, luckily, I'm, like, friends with the eye surgeon. That's, I've had so many eye surgeries that we became homies, and we ended up going fishing together, <laughs> like, hanging out. How, what's eye surgery feel like? Like, are you, like, sore afterwards? It, it depends which eye surgery. Though they put a silicone, um, they, like, welded my retina on, back on and put a silicone bubble right on the optic nerve, and it felt like somebody just had their thumb inside my eye for a month. You're joking. I wish to, I wish I was. That does, that sounds fucking horrible. Yeah, what? 
Yeah, and on top of that, you got to keep your face down the whole time so that it keeps pressure on it. I just watched, uh, tw I don't know if you're familiar with like movies, let alone zombie movies, but I watched uh, 28 Days Later a couple days ago, and like I saw somebody like gouge someone's eyes out. And like you saying that reminded me of that scene. Dude, I can't watch that stuff. Really? And yeah, luckily I'm blind. I just have to turn my head a little bit and it goes away, but... <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do you fuck with, like, horror movies? Yeah, yeah. It's, okay. it's, I mean, I'll be, I don't watch them with myself that often. They're much better with somebody else. Definitely. You said you have kidney disease? Yeah, yeah. I have chronic kidney disease. What's that like? It's fucking hell. Really? Yeah, so, like, right now the dialysis isn't really working, and they're going to have, like, a procedure, so I'm going to go to chemo. So I was doing PD, so every night... I would hook up to this machine and it would fill my stomach full of fluid. It would attempt to pull the fluid and toxins out. That swell up like uh, that scene from uh, Willy Wonka. It's like I tried the gum. And then, uh, and then it drains out and you feel like a Capri Sun afterwards. Are you serious? Yeah. It's fucking... And you do that every night. What? How do you hook something up to your stomach? I have a... Cath a port a catheter. Okay, so it goes in, into it and then it like it looks like a little pigtail and it goes in, into your peritoneal cavity. Snap. Okay, so you you do that, it's putting fluid it's putting fluids inside of you. Yeah. And then drain sucking you dry. Yeah, it's a dextrose solution, so it's a it's a sugar solution that pulls all the fluid out. Cause like without that I just fill up like a water balloon. Like, it's not working now, and I'm just, like, filled up with a water balloon. Okay. And I gotta sleep, like, propped up, or else all the water comes into my lungs. It'll get into your lungs? Yeah, it, like, flow, floods up like that, and I can't, like, it just makes it hard to breathe. Does it hurt when it's pumping you full of stuff and draining it? Yeah, I mean, it's, like, it hurts you, like, stretch out. Oh. And when it drains, it feels like it's pulling your balls to your asshole. Oh. Yeah, which I thought would be cool, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like no safe word, so you're like stuck. <laughs> and the scene does not listen. How long do you have to do that for? Ten hours. Ten hours? So while you're like asleep? Uh, yeah, except for I can't sleep through that shit. No way. Thanks. Yeah. How many <laughs> hours a day do you sleep? Um, I get like two or three hours. You get two hours of sleep a day? Yeah. Is your brain okay? No. It's fucking, I struggle through school. I've been struggling through school this whole semester. Oh, I, that's I, right. You're in fucking school right now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Cal Poly or Cuesta? Cal Poly. Damn. Okay. Is it like, what do you, what do you even, like, what do you study there? Psychology. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I like it, man. It's, it's interesting. How do you sleep for two to three hours a day and take on schoolwork? Uh, I just struggle. I try my best. Really? Yeah. That's I mean, why you wanted just, some coffee? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like stuck. I mean, there's like, my option is to quit working towards my goal or to work like, like I lower, like I only took one class. Usually I take like three or four. So I lowered how much I, like my workload. My option is to quit doing what I want, what I love, or to find a way and just work my way through it. And I'm like, fuck it, I'm a slumlord, I can just work my way through it. Yeah, yeah. What is your goal? I want to get an LMFT. I want to be a licensed uh, therapist. An LMFT? Yeah, it's a licensed marriage family therapist. Lice There's no one else that could do it better than you. Yeah. That'd be so funny if you were a licensed marriage therapist. You <laughs> yeah. would be, you would like... You would listen to problems and you would come up with solutions and you would, I could totally see you doing it. How close are you? Uh, I'm working, I'm a, like a year away from my bachelor's and then I have to do the master's program. Okay. So, so you're getting there. Yeah. It you're depends on how many classes I can take. Once I get the, like, so I'm on, I'm on the list to get a kidney and a pancreas. Okay. So once I get that, then all this stuff will go away. It'll, I'll just be blind again. Okay, so you, so you have, uh, you have two kidneys inside of you. Yeah, they basically look like California raisins. They're tiny? No, they're just all shriveled up and Damn. gross, and wrinkled, and they, I think they got glasses and they're doing finger guns. <laughs> like, hey, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
and how long does it t- you're you're on this list? How long does it take to get? Um... So the 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 there's two lists. There's the dual pancreas li- the dual transplant list, and the single transplant list. The single transplant list is just the kidney, and uh, that one's a ten year long list. You want to be other for ten years? Yeah, and the other one's a two year long list. I feel like people die every day. Yeah, but apparently, apparently they're got garbage fucking insides. Really? Yeah. Because everybody's like fat and out of shape. Yeah, and when people like don't donate their shit, they're selfish. I don't know what they're gonna do with it. I feel oh. like we should just take it. I'm. Do- I'll be. A, I, how do I become a, a a donor? When you do at the DMV, when they ask you, when you get your license. Oh yeah. Okay. Like, do you want to be a donor? And then I'll be one. I'm yeah. Done. All right. Cool. I'll kill you. We'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> if I knew how to fight, I'd do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's no point in really, like, people want to get buried in like a casket and like lowered below the ground and stuff. And yeah. it, I've always kind of wondered, like, why. Yeah, I don't know either. But I've thought about my funeral. I like. I know. I've already had made some requests. Really? Yeah. So. You know when you go to someone's funeral and you like you know them real well and like strangers are like, hey, that was like my good friend and they're not really good friends. Yeah. I want someone with a foghorn there. That's like, eh, bullshit. Like next. <laughs> and then like every time, someone goes up there and tries to act like we were friends when we weren't. I want a movie. Eh. You that person, the guy with the foghorn, must be a close person to you because they would have to like verify everything. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That'd be funny if they got it wrong. It like <laughs> a foghorn fight. <clears throat> so you're, what happened? Can you do one kidney at a time, or does it have to be the? Uh, like, I could do the one kidney. And that's a two-year list. That's the ten-year list. Oh, one kidney is the ten-year list. Yeah, the one with the dual transplant is the two-year list. What's dual transplant means? They would give you two kidneys, right? There would be one kidney and a pancreas. So oh. I would no longer be diabetic. So t- you're looking for a triplant, a tri. You only plant. get one extra kidney. So they don't like. Oh, uh, okay. So you can live off of one kidney. So they just put one in you. One shitty kidney and one brand new kidney. Yeah. Damn. They leave the other ones in there. They don't take them out. They Got stick it. the kidney down here by your groin because I guess they assume that's where you'll protect it most. Okay. But um, little do they know, I've been kicked there before too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's easier to get, a pancreas or a kidney? Probably a, 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 a pancreas. pancreas is way is, is much easier. I mean, but it takes it has to be a dead body to get the pancreas because you can't live without one. Okay. And then the kidney, you can do a living donor. Like someone could donate their kidney to me. You have to be. They have to be a certain type of uh, blood, right? Or yeah. Like you, your guys's blood have to be compatible. Yeah, they'd have to be a match. They'd be tissue typing and. But they actually have a program where, so say if you were going to donate your kidney to me, but just off of the small interactions I met, I don't think you have good ones. If you were going to donate <laughs> your shriveled kidney to me uh, and we didn't wear matches, what they would do is they would find somebody that you were a match to and then uh, someone that I was a, that was a match to me and they just trade them. Okay. So they have like a kidney trade program. I bet you there's a huge black market for this type of stuff. There's yeah. gotta be, right? Like, you know yeah. the right people, there's some shady shit going on in, like, Mexico, you call this person. Like, yeah, I'm sure there's there. somebody walking around with, like, three kidneys. Yeah. The three kidneys were drinking a stem cell smoothie, like... And they just, they have, like, a black van full of, like, yeah, body yeah, parts. Yeah. Like, if you want a new dick, we got a new dick. Yeah, yeah. They're like, hey, do you want one of these? Look, I got dicks. <laughs> yeah, like, like, the fucking, the, the trench coat. Thing. Yeah, yeah. It's like, all so these got dicks, I got kidneys, <laughs> like, I got a pancreas. I'm not sure what this is, but you can have it for half off. Buy two, get one free. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, Austin said you're going into surgery tomorrow. Yeah, I'm having a procedure put in. They're going to put like a, it's like a stint that goes here and then it like connects to an artery that goes to your heart so that I can do hemodialysis instead of peritoneal dialysis. So I'll go to the clinic, they'll pull my blood out, clean it, put it oh, back in. Oh, your blood? 
eh, it's like a little bit at a time. Okay. It's like uh, if you were like cleaning dishwater, you know, like if you just keep adding clean water to it. Okay. Is that once a day, once a month? Three times a week. Three times a week. So that's better than doing the 10 hour at night shit? Yeah, the 10 hour at night shit's not working. So like I, anything will be better than something that's not working. And they're trying to keep you alive. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's surprisingly. Do you, uh, are you, like, what's your diet consist of? Because you must be very limited to the things you can eat and drink. Yeah, I, I mean, you have a renal diet, but, I mean, quite honestly, food's, like, pretty gross. I'm nauseous all the time. Really? Like, all the time. Like, I took a Zofran before you came over. What's a Zofran? It's an anti-nausea medication. Okay. It tastes like, um, like, it, it tastes like almost candy, which is really frustrating. Yeah. It's, like, almost good. Yeah. Like, everything I've ever cooked. Are you a good cook? Almost. <laughs> What's your best meal you can make? Cereal. Cereal? Yeah. What type of cereal? Just straight milk. Really? Yeah. You know? Fucking with you. <laughs> I, oh, okay. Yeah. I, uh, no, I don't cook very much. It's not my thing. Are you... You're not allowed to, like, smoke weed. Like, yeah. Have you ever smoked weed? Uh, yeah, I used to. I mean, I've been sober for 14 years. Like, I just, from I everything? Take, yeah, from everything. And you probably feel better. Yeah. I remember when I first came to California and smoked the weed out here, I was like, why don't you guys give me something easy like heroin? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I was like, well, I wanted to go up a tree with a sniper rifle. I was like, and sit there and listen to my breathing. Am I breathing? Am I breathing? Because you were so paranoid. Off yeah, the, it's, off that the was coach. like fucking way too. It was like much better than the dirt weed in Arizona. Yeah, California people have gotten people are doing like some fucking cellular molecular biology shit, creating these weed strains and like. Yeah, just, this shit uh, just scares me at this point in my life. So they probably keep getting better too. You yeah, know? which would be worse for me. I'm telling you, it'd be next to me. It'd be butt naked up that that tree. Yeah. So when I was drinking, I uh, used to, the cops knew that I was like an easy drunk in public in Morro Bay. You would so, get drunk in public in Morro Bay? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> so they would see me and then and like, I don't like going to jail. So they'd be like, hey Matt. And I'd be like, fuck you. And I would run, but I'm slow, right? And I can't run very far, but I can climb a tree like a motherfucker. So I would run to the first tree, climb up to the top of it, and I'd be at the top and they'd be at the bottom. And that's where I'd start negotiating the terms of my surrender. What type of negotiation, what type of deals would you come up so with? So I was like, I didn't want to pay the fine. I was like, I understand that I have to go to jail, but I don't want to pay the fine. And I'd sit there and I'd smoke cigarettes and like, I'd take anything that was in my pockets. I'd like any drugs, I'd eat them. And I'd just yell insults down at them. Did they, did they like you? No. I mean, I think they enjoyed the game. Yeah. Because it was like a tweaker and cat game. Yeah. But they were not my friends. <laughs> so, how, did they ever say, like, okay, come to jail with us, you don't have to pay the price? Yeah, all the time. Okay. They were like, just come in, we'll be fine. Sometimes they lie to me, but... And then I'd just climb down, and they'd beat me up a little bit, and... They'd put their hands on you? Yeah. Well, because I'd, like, try to run again. Oh, uh, okay. I'd get to the bottom and change my mind. <laughs> have to tackle me just on the spot yeah <laughs> where were you getting drunk at the fucking park or yeah the bars? Go to the bars and then i'd be leaving the bar so this would be like 1 a.m yeah okay so okay so these are some nighttime deal negotiations going down yeah i never did it during the day okay <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were at fucking like albertson's <laughs> or something yeah i had a problem but i wasn't that drunk until it was it was nighttime were you ever into uh, surfing or anything? Living yeah, I've been bed? surfing my whole life. I've been surfing since I was nine years old. Oh, it's not? Okay. Yeah. Just not currently? Not currently because I can't put this thing underwater. And I, like I, so I stopped surfing when I lost my vision. Yeah. But I've decided that I'm going to get back into it. And my whole thing that I'm worried about is I don't want to run into somebody. Yeah. Because that shit could change somebody's life. True. True. So I'm going to get this rash guard that just says blind on it real big. Yeah. And then I have to wear sunglasses when I'm out there anyways. So like it looked different. I'll just get a foam board and like, yeah. fuck it. I mean, I might look kooky, but if I hit somebody, they'll live. And it's like, 
And at that point, it's their fault. I mean, if you see a giant rash guard that says blind and you don't call me off, like, it doesn't say deaf, jackass. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I don't have, not have, not have him wearing a necklace that says, look, I'm Helen Keller. Yeah. You could always, uh, like, when you go, when you start surfing again, what if it got to the point where you were uh, going with, like, a group of people and they would just kind of, well, you know, that's... take over your own peak? There's like five of you guys, and like no one, no one, no one dares paddle over to you. Yeah, that would be. I mean, that'd be fine, but that's just not. It is surfing anymore. There's just too many people. It used to be when I first came out to Morro Bay, it was like that. You could go find your own little peak and surf it on your own. But now it's like, you know, if it's going out, the people just come out by the dozens. Yeah, there's just too many of them. You could go uh, North Morro Bay, like Aceran, by like the campsites yeah, and stuff. I, yeah. It's shittier, but I, there's less people. I surf there a lot. Hatteras, I surf Hatteras a lot. That was like one of my favorite spots. Because there's so many little tiny be- like peaks. Like You could just paddle down the beach. The, uh, the thing that you're doing with the stents because your dialysis isn't working... You said you're going to be doing that three times a week. Does that mean you don't, you're not going to be doing the 10 hour thing anymore because it's not working? So it sounds yeah, like you're going to be able to catch up on your sleep cycle? Yeah, that's the whole idea. That okay. Hopefully you can sleep. Why didn't you guys just do that from the start? Uh, it was just, we kept trying different things to make it work. Because it's like, uh, it's, work. I don't drive, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm blind, so. I mean, if I did, I'd have to have, like, one hand on the wheel, one hand on the road. And um, and so I, I wanted to do it at the house so I had more control. Got it. So now you could, got to find a ride, pretty much. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, uh, one of one of my roommates said they drive me all the time. Zach? Yeah, Zach. Nice. Said, yeah, he, he signed up. That's funny. You got, you've, I bet you've, you've developed a friendship with Austin and Zach. Like, you're, I bet you, like, you're never going to forget them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we live together. You yeah. Know, we look out for <laughs> How long have you guys been living here? So, Zach's been here for almost a year now. Okay. And uh, Austin's been in the living room for, like, three months. Yeah. But, I mean, he, I mean, he couldn't stay where he was at. That's why we, we were like, hey, come here. This almost seems kind of like the healed house. Like, you're healing... Austin's healing, so there's another person healing, uh, Zach's, like, in school, just, like, grinding on things, like, it's not, like, this sound, uh, when I came over, and I was, like, uh, last time I was here, and I was, like, falling asleep on the couch, I was just, like, overwhelmed by the therapeutic beauty of just the vibe here, like, it just felt like everyone just kind of, you know, working on themselves, enjoying life, and you're just, like, in the corner cracking jokes. Yeah, I mean, you well... Know? Well, humor helps the healing, for one. But, yeah, I mean, everybody here is moving forward in their lives, and we all are helping each other. You know what I mean? Like, so, we're... I mean, that's that's kind of how it should be, right? It's yeah. So, it's a, it's a hierarchy of relationships. Relationships based on a hierarchy of needs. Yeah. So, like, if... Like, Austin needs someone to make him coffee in the morning, and so I wake up every morning and make the guy coffee and breakfast... And then I make my own, you know, and I need rides. So, you know, Zach helps me with me rides. And, and like, when Zach lost his job, I just called somebody up and was like, hey, I, this guy's a good worker. You should give him a job. Like, I just, like that. You know what I mean? So, so it's not a transactional relationship. It's a higher. So when you come in here, I feel that's why it felt like a home. Yeah, yeah. What was it? You said it's hierarchy relationship versus transactional. Yeah. What's what? So it's hierarchy of needs. So we sort of see whoever needs a resource, and the resources go to there. So it's like a, a scale that's tipping, and we're sharing our resources so that everybody comes up to the same level. Okay. And a transactional relationship is like I will give you this if you give me that. Oh, because it's a transaction. Yeah. I'll give you money. You give me products. Transaction. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. That's uh, that's. Did they teach you that in psychology? Or yeah. Something? Yeah. Okay. So now you're using. Uh, you're applying. Yeah, I apply a terms. lot of the psychology okay. stuff to my own life. Why do you want to do psychology so bad? Well, for one, it's interesting. Well, so when I lost my vision, 
I uh, I had to figure out what I, who I was and what I was gonna do, you know. Like, and so my option was live off a of disability. And I always like I mean anybody who's doing that like like, like I that I understand that's your situation. I don't mean to put that down, but I had higher aspirations. So I was like, all right, well I'll go back to school. And I was like, I was a third year freshman when I dropped out. Yeah. <laughs> so I was going to go back to school and get a, a drug and alcohol certificate. Okay. And I took a couple of those classes and I was like, I was more interested in the psychology than I was being a drug and alcohol counselor. So I switched my major and was like, you know, I, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go all the way to the master's program and, and, and handle this. How did you, did you start at Cuesta? Or like yeah, how I did you get Cuesta, into all the... I started at Cuesta, okay. and I'm a big fan of Cuesta. I, I like the best school. school you can go to. Yeah, like I'm biased because I've never been to Cal Poly or anything, but Cuesta, like Cuesta, is the type of place where you can hang out with your teachers outside of school. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I used to. I had a, a history teacher who'd come sit on the bench with me when I was vaping. Yeah. Yeah. Super chill, super. Yeah, it's a great yeah. place. They like you actually like the students care about you. The faculty cares about you. And I feel like I got the same quality education that I'm getting at, at Cal Poly. Yeah. No, it's Quest is legit. Yeah. If they had a master's program, I'd have gone through it. You so you got your associate degree at Questa yeah, for I psychology. Got, yeah, I got an associate to transfer in psychology, and I got an associate's in behavioral science. Okay, and then Cal Poly accepted you. Well, I actually went to Monterey first, um, online during COVID. Got it. And then I kept applying at Co at uh, Cal Poly because I didn't want to leave the area. Yeah, you okay? You did not get in the first time. No. What type of grades do you need? Just like straight A's or something. Straight A's. Yeah, I got a, I had a three point nine. So. Oh, so you got like one B. Yeah, I got one B, and I know that guy. I remember him. <laughs> What class did you get to be in? Political science. Oh, that um, one's hard. Yeah. Political science. I got to see. They it. did. Yeah. I kept arguing with him about his ideas. We had way different political views. Was, I'm like a libertarian, so I'm like, the government shouldn't tell you what to do. Yeah. And he was like, you're an idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it, who was the teacher? Uh, I forget his name, but I just remember that he so was this Mexican guy. And I remember he gave this speech. Mr. Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Yeah. <laughs> that class was so speech. hard for me. Yeah. I was shitty at that. Yeah, his tests were fucking hard. Yeah, yeah. He's all here. Take a fifty multiple choices and write an essay. Yeah. In an hour. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like it, there's the door. Yeah. Remember that speech? <laughs> Something like that. He, yeah, he was. Yeah, you you kind of to enjoy going to that class. You almost kind of had to show up in a different mood and be like, okay, like he's so into it that you almost have to kind of like play the game if you're gonna have the slightest bit of fun. Yeah. But someone I know that's like super cutthroat, super uh, political, very uh, not ki conniving or scheming. Okay, they would be a great uh, Game of Thrones character. Because, like, they would stab you in your back to level up. Yeah, yeah. Like, they, they got an A in that class. And they're, like, super good at it. And uh, that was, like, their favorite teacher. Jeez. Yeah. So it just depends on who you are. But yeah. that's, that's funny. Um, <clears throat> when did you start Questa? What like, year? It was, like, 2016. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So I've been going to school for, jeez, for almost eight years now. It's fun. Yeah, it's yeah, fun. it's fun. I mean, I'll be happy when it's time to go to work. Yeah. You know, but that's a long ways away, too. You you said in, like, two years you'll have a... Yeah, like, experience. I got about, like... Well, I got, yeah, in about a year, year... Well, if I would have stayed on track and mm -hmm. kept taking three classes... Yeah. Three, then, yeah, I would have been, uh, like, a year and a half, and I would have been had my bachelor's, but... I mean, I only took one class this semester. Yeah. Are they, are they chill, like, are, do they let anybody do part-time, uh, like, student there? Like, can you take one class at Cal Poly? Because you can take one class at Cuesta forever. Can you, you take know, one I, class I at... I didn't even ask permission, so, okay. like, I was, I started off, because they're, they're four-unit classes. Yeah. So I just started off taking two and eight units, 
counts you as full time. Oh, nice. Okay. And then I tried to drop one of them, and that wasn't even my fault. Like, so I get, have to get the I can't see mm-hmm. like the print on the books. Yeah. So I have to get PDF files. Okay. And then put it on my iPad and invert the colors. And they're supposed to give me a PDF file and uh, and they were just like they stalled. They were like, "Oh, we don't have it yet. We don't have it yet. We don't have it yet." And I was like three weeks into the class. You're joking. No. <laughs> and I was like, and I didn't have the access to the book. And I was like, well. Were you like emailing them and shit? Yeah, I was emailing them. And then so what I did this time was I went in and talked to somebody in their office and was like, listen, this system isn't working. This is the second time this has happened. Next time I want to come in here, sit down in your office and we can get make, get this, this, this settled out. Because this emailing back and forth thing is inefficient. Yeah, that sounds like a nightmare trying to get PDFs of the books from you were emailing like the teacher or like a no that was assistant? emailing the there's like a um, a disability resource center got it I was like this is your goddamn job yeah but they hire they have like student workers do you so, think they weren't trying hard enough for yeah them? I don't think they were, <laughs> yeah. Three weeks later, and you're like six chapters behind midterm next week. Yeah, there's a chapter quiz every month. Oh, so and you it was were... like I was, you know, the the class was cognition, so it was like all about brain chemistry. And, yeah. And I, I was like trying to figure it out. I was like trying to Google it and read it on Wikipedia, and it just wasn't working out. So you're you're kind of dealing with adversity with your uh, blindness and just trying to navigate the system to reach your ultimate goal yeah and it's just it doesn't i mean they suck at cal poly about it cuesta was great but cal poly it's like too big of an institution yeah at cuesta you can like text the teacher they're like hey here's my number just text me or call me if you need anything but at cal poly i bet you it's like you're with 500 other kids in one classroom it's yeah i've had some classes like that but i mean the where i'm at in psychology it was all the upper level ones so the classes are like, you know, maybe 20, 20 kids, 25. Okay. And I like, I emphasize the word kids. Mm-hmm. Like they're all super young. Like 20, 20, 21. Yeah. Yeah. Like 21 is like the highest, 20, maybe 22. How old are you? I'm 39. Hell yeah. Yeah. Are you excited to turn 40? No, not really. I mean, I'm actually kind of, so like when I turned 39, I was so excited that I stayed alive. Yeah. I was like, I worked hard this year. <laughs> like, usually it's a given, you know what I mean? But I was like, I really fucking worked for this one. So, I, and when I turn 40, hopefully I'll have, like, you know, new parts. Yeah. Yeah, and you, that's right, your birthday is April 3rd? Yeah. Okay, so you're you're fresh into 39. You got, yeah. like, another, like, 11 months. Yeah, yeah. Nice, dude. Hell yeah. But what? I'm going to do it because I'm a winner, remember? Yeah, you like to win. Yeah. How competitive yeah. are you? Well, I like, I, it's crazy. Like, yeah, I will put as much as ever. So I got into this Warhammer game with Zach, but he bought better parts, like <laughs> a better army than I did. So I went and spent like $300 so I could fuck him up in it. Are you serious? Yeah. So it's a pay to play game. No, like the parts, like the, the pieces are expensive. Like you oh. different, so different guys do different things, like different abilities and like, the more expensive ones do more. And I was like, all right, well, if you're going to win, you think you're going to win, like, I'm going to invest some money to beat you. Is it a board game or, or it's a... It's a strategy game with figurines. Okay, so you play it on a table. Yeah. You're rolling dice and drawing cards. You're rolling dice and um, making and you're making movements. So it's a war game, but there's no cards. How would you mind, like, describing, like, exactly how to play it? Like, what each player does. Oh, I always shit. find that entertaining. Like, figuring out, like, what, like why really are you hard. playing it? So it's yeah, hard? Okay. Yeah, there, there's, like, a tone that you have to read while you're doing it. So, like, each person, each little army has different hits. And then, so, the whole idea, I mean, there's a lot of lore behind it, which is, got me, which is what got me interested. But it's a, it's a war strategy game with fantasy figures. So, like, I would play, I have, like, my army's orcs, you know what I mean? And the, 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 like, the lore behind them is that they're made from mushrooms, and then all they want to do is kill things. And if you kill one of them, 
supposedly just turns into spores and ends up with more. And then the, they're like idiots. They're like orcs. You know what I mean? Fat trolls with big clubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But by fat trolls with big clubs, they're going to fucking kill his dinosaurs. His dinosaurs? Yeah. What type of dinosaurs? Mean fucking ones. Velociraptors? Yeah. <laughs> T-Rexes? T-Rexes, yeah. Like, I was like, I, I picked the wrong army. No, would be so crazy. Is uh, Speaking of dinosaurs, like, could you imagine... I mean, I guess it would be fucked up, but I guess this is kind of like the inner... Um, what was that one like? What was that one thing we were saying earlier about how we naturally like watching the UFC because our ancestors were like fighting in the arenas and shit? What's yeah, that called again? Oh, uh, it's. You said a word earlier, and I really liked it. Instinctual. Instinctual, like my instincts are kicking in right now. Could you imagine if we had the ability to have these massive cages and watch like two T-Rexes fight each other. Oh my god. Or like two pay, Velociraptors. That would be so much money. Or two great white sharks. Or two megalodons, I should say. Fuck a great white megalodon. Yeah, yeah, right. Or like throw a T Rex in the Megalodon cave. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, in like uh in like ten feet high water. So like the T Rex can still kinda of move around or some shit, you know? Dude, that'd be amazing. That'd be crazy. Like some simulation shit even. I don't know. Yeah. Do you um, know what a Spinosaurus is? No. Okay. I'm assuming it's a dinosaur with back problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It has like a... It's kind of like a T-Rex, but just like different features almost. Like like more of like a narrow, longer, like crocodile face. Oh, uh, yeah. And they can swim. Make those things fight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would... Uh, that would... That would kill. I mean... <laughs> I would get the pay-per-view every time. Yeah. Well, yeah. You've been... Doing the pay-per-views with uh, UFC. Yeah, yeah, I get the pay-per-view fight. Every then I invite a bunch of people over, and you know we all scream and yell. It's funner when like when everybody's yelling at, it. and then yeah. when people get like wrapped up in it, like, people come over because it's a party, and next thing you know, they're like interested. They interested. In it. It's instinctual. They see two people fighting, and they have to watch. Yeah, and then they want to fight. Yeah, and they. I mean, I think they miss the intricacies of it. Yeah, you know, like they don't see like how technical of a sport it really is, but they definitely realize when someone's head almost gets kicked off their shoulder. t Yeah, man, that was so sad. I bet against him. I won like a hundred bucks because I knew he was going to lose, but some part of me wanted him to win. I had a weird feeling Tony was going to win. Did you? Yeah, but then like, I remember seeing like Michael Chandler was like a minus 300 favorites um and like Tony was like a plus like 300 underdog or whatever yeah I was like I guess that like like looking at Michael Chandler he looks so fucking ripped it's like this guy doesn't even look like he's 155 pounds yeah he looks like a bulldog yeah literally like a bulldog so it's like okay like actually how is Tony going to submit this guy because yeah. I was like, Tony, like, the only way to beat him is probably a submission, you yeah, know? But it's like, out, how yeah. do you even get a hold of him? Yeah, I don't know. And he rocked him that first round. Tony? Oh, Tony, yeah. The yeah. first round definitely went to Tony. I mean, he looked crisp. And I was like, fuck, man. I was like, I'm going to lose 100 bucks. And then uh, then Chandler came out of that first round, and it was like that second round, and just kicked Tony's head right off his shoulders. Doink? Yep. And you know, I was like, oh, shit, I just watched Tony Ferguson die. Yeah. I was like, this is going to be a bad day. I had a friend get up and walk out of the room, and he was like, no, Tony, not Tony. It's funny, because we'll put a fight on at our house, whether it's, like, on YouTube or, uh, yeah, usually it's always uh, UFC will upload, like, a free fight. We'll watch it on YouTube. And, like, whenever, like, like Liv will get up and walk out of the room because she, like, does not like it. Yeah, and, yeah. She can handle it, but she just, de- like, she doesn't want to be affiliated. I always thought that was funny. Yeah. I don't know. You can just put it on in all rooms. <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's different for, because anybody who's, like, doesn't like violence. Yeah. Like, if you fight or flight, right? Mm-hmm. It's instinctual. Some of us are like, oh, yeah, this is, let's watch this. And other people are like, oh, shit, violence, run. yeah. Just like I used to be like, oh shit, cops, climb a tree. 
When was the last time you climbed a tree running from the cops? Oh, it's probably been like 15 years. So it's been a while. Yeah. It's been a long time. Yeah, I don't even know if I can get up the tree now. Yeah. The one time they tased me on the low branch. Really? Yeah, I was like, I ran and I like jumped on the low branch and I was going to swing up. And they shot me with a taser right in the ass and the lower back. And I don't know if you've ever been tased before, but it's not like a singular event. I've never been tased. They like, did it, did it. Then, so they like shoot me and I'm like, ah, blah, 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 blah. and I'm like, you motherfuckers. And they like, do it again. And the worst part is when they pull the hooks out, they're barbed. It's like, it fucking hurts. How does it get through like clothes and like jackets? Uh, I don't know. It was like a like a fucking needle with a barb in it, like okay. like a blow dart. Really? Yeah. And it just cuts through whatever you're wearing. Yeah, it went right through my fucking pants, right through my shirt. And then I like pissed a little every time they did it. Really? So like, I had to go to jail, and I was like so mad. I was like, you know how hard it is to make friends with piss on your pants. What was they like, say? I, they were just one. They they hated fucking taking me to jail. <laughs> <laughs> so you were in your. Early to mid twenties, just causing ruckus. Yeah, my early twenties. Yeah, so I got sober when I was twenty four. Got it. Haven't like drinking or anything since. No, nothing. I've been been just completely sober. Just done with it. Were you just doing like all drugs or like one drug in specifically? I mean, I was mainly a dirty tweaker, but I mean, I wasn't picky. Yeah. Like I, I loved the drug. I loved the most was free. Free? Free drugs. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, that one seemed to be the one that was my favorite. Yeah. Did you have, uh, like, tweaker friends? Yeah, like, it's hard to be a tweaker without... I mean, I think of more of them more... They are, like, skeksis, but, yeah, at the time, I thought we were friends. What's a skeksis? You never watched The Dark Crystal? Uh-uh. Oh, you're missing out, man. It's a fucking horrible movie, but... The Dark Crystal? Yeah, you should watch The Dark Crystal. It's... Basically, there's these um, vulture-like creatures, and it's like it was made in the '80s, so it's like not done well. That are trying to like suck the soul out of these other like little people that live in bushes, and they have to like beat the skeksis and get the crystal back that they're using to suck the souls out of them. The skeksis are all. So the the dark crystal is not a reference to like math or anything like that. No, no, but okay. the skeksis <laughs> is a reference to tweakers. Really? Yeah, I, that's okay. what I that's when I think about them. I think of them as like skeksis. Do you have a favorite movie? Um, no, no, I don't. It's hard. I mean, I like I love movies. So yeah. It's hard to be like. I'm a big Will Ferrell fan. Like, I like a funny movie, and I love watching an idiot. So, like, I like the campaign a lot. Is Will Ferrell the dude that did Night at the Museum? No. Okay. No, that's the guy who did the Zoolander. I don't remember his name. Will Ferrell did Talladega Nights. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. I think it's Farrell Williams or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, Like, there's a lot of Farrells. Yeah. Farrells yeah. or Farrell, I don't know. <clears throat> Um, last couple of questions for you. Why did you want to do the marriage counseling therapist? Like, because, why that route? So what happened was, like, I, when I went blind, right, I, would, I was having a hard time adjusting to the world as it was. There's a lot of moving parts, and I wasn't feeling safe, so I went and saw a therapist. For real? Yeah, Damn. and she helped me, like, get some coping mechanisms and be all right with the world. And I was like, you know, if I'm going to dedicate the rest of Because I, I dedicated my life to fishing because I loved fishing and it was good for me. And I was like, if I'm going to dedicate my life to a, uh, another job, I want to be, to be one that helps people. Are you, is there a specific, like, field you're going to be going into it? Just, like, it I want to just, just like, work with the general public. And you want to... You wanna, Hear out people's problems and give advice. Well, yeah, like help them figure out what they're really, what's really going on. You know, what I mean, probe deeper, and, and then once we find out what the really issue is, then offer modalities that might help be helpful, and help them help themselves. Right. So I don't feel like I have the the answer for anybody, 
I think the answer is already within them. Only thing that I have that they don't have that I can share is is uh, empirical modalities that have been proven to help people in similar situations. And we can mix and match and do whatever they, I mean, and it's really up to the person. Yeah. You know, like, I want to help people help themselves. Yeah. I mean, clearly I got this guy living in my living room until, until he heals up because yeah. I was concerned that where he was at wasn't going to be the best spot. Definitely not, yeah. And I don't charge him any rent or anything. He's just here because he's my friend. Yeah. That's dope. You guys have totally became friends, huh? Oh, uh, yeah. We're like, I mean, I come in here every morning. He's trapped here. He's got to listen to me. Yeah. What's uh, off the top of your head? What is the coping mechanism that the therapist you saw gave to you to help you do? So the one day? that helped the most was, uh, so my eyes were still adjusting and I used to see things that weren't like there. There'd be like shapes in my my brain would try to make that shape into something that made sense to me. So like, for instance, I remember looking down Higuera and it looked like there was like a couple tents in the road. Yeah. And I was like, and it would really trip me out. So, uh, you know, she advised that I find like one close friend that I hang out with, let them know what that was going on and ask them if I could ask them if they saw what I saw. Okay. And that, that helped a lot. Cause they'd be like, I don't, I'm like, Hey, what do you see? Like, what do you see down there? Like just the street, and I'd be like, well, I see tents and stuff, and then he'd explain to me exactly everything he saw, and it would help my brain like pull it back together. Was that life changing for you when you started going blind? Did that changed me as a human being? You were just like I like. When did you start? If you don't mind me so asking. So it would it happened suddenly. I went blind over the the process of like two weeks. Okay. So I was surfing down in Mexico with my dad. We went down to K-38s. And uh, I, I came up out of the water, and there was, like, this dark shadow in my eye. And I was like, damn, this water's dirty. Like, Yeah. And then uh, I surfed like that for, like, I don't know, four or five days. And then uh, I was like, I gotta, can't wait to get back to the United States and see a real doctor. And then I came back and I had to go to work and I was working for Verges. So uh, I went and I like missed a couple of gaffes. And uh, that was was not typical of me. And the, the captain was like, hey, dude, there's something wrong with you. Like, you need to go get glasses. Don't come into work until you have glasses. And I went and uh, had my eyes checked to get glasses. And they were like, you need to go see a surgeon. Like, you're, you're in fucking trouble, buddy. Really? And I went and saw my surgeon, the guy, because he'd done a bunch of laser eye surgery for me for free. Because my eyes, what happened was my eyes bled and it hemorrhaged and it separated my eye from my retina. Fuck. And they had been bleeding before and he like shot a bunch of lasers in there and stopped it. And I went and saw him and all he did was say, oh man, oh no. Like he was more bummed than I was. Really? Yeah. Because we were friends already. Like he, When he did all that free stuff for me, I just started taking him fishing and hanging out with him. So then after that, it was like I had to change. Like everything I did changed. Who like, I used to like be a lot more um, outgoing. Like I'd be like make a lot more jokes. So like, when you're coming over, like when you came over here, you came into my environment, right? Yeah, yeah. So I had no problem like cracking jokes but when I go outside it's like there's a lot of moving parts you gotta be careful kinda yeah and I can't see micro expressions so it's difficult to, for me to have like like to connect with someone if I haven't been around them for a while yeah what uh, year did this happen to you 2015 okay so like 6 years ago 7 yeah. years ago is there anything that you can do to, like, make your eyes better again? Like, any more, like, surgeries or, like, carrots you can eat? No, no. I mean, that's it. This best is to keep it where it's at. Okay. I mean, uh, I tried poking it one time, but it just hurt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a hot steak will not work. Or you, and no, no more driving for you. You can't drive ever again. No, I mean, I might be able to, like, so I can see straight enough. Right? Yeah. But my issue is, is, is what if, like, some kid runs out into the street? Yeah. You know what I mean? At what point am I, is it, can I say it's an accident or I was personally responsible? Yeah, yeah. 
you know, and I just, I, I would, for me, I would feel personally responsible. And this county sucks ass not to drive in. Like, it, like it really sucks. It's like, a, it's a real sacrifice. Mm-hmm. So I surrendered my license. And they said if I wanted to get it back, I'd have to take a driving test. And, um, and like, my doctor said that I see well enough to drive. That I could get, I could pass it. Okay. But, like I said, it comes down to personal responsibility. Yeah. <clears throat> Are you, um... Yeah, that's... Yeah, I mean, you pretty much have answered, like, a fair amount of things that I wanted to ask or bring up. Um, anything that you want to say to the camera, anybody listening? Um, Any advice, life stuff? Yeah, I mean, if I was going to give an advice, it would be that, like, if you can, if you find yourself continuing a pattern that isn't, that creates cognitive dissonance, which means it doesn't go with who you are as a person, then, you know, either seek professional help or sit down and track your thoughts and be like, what happens before this happens? And then interject a different thought to get a different behavior. You know, like you're not stuck in your role. Like I've lived three different lifestyles in one lifetime, right? So I lived, the, there's the one I was raised with. I was raised by a drug addict and I got hooked on drugs. And then I got off drugs and I lived as a commercial fisherman. And I did all the commercial fisherman things. And then my life changed again, and now I've did. Now I'm gonna be a therapist, and uh, and I like, and you know, and I and I help people. It's like you're not stuck in the role that you're in. I like that. Yeah. Appreciate you coming on. Yeah, no problem. Oh, oh yeah. yeah Thank I, you. That was you. You killed it. Honestly, uh, thank you for, yeah, thank you for giving me this opportunity, for real. Yeah, like no problem, man. I've had a great time, great experience. That's good, yeah. I don't know if you've ever done, like, a podcast or, like, an interview before or anything like no, that. No, no, 